been freaked out uh, when I invoked a spirit and has anything ever gone wrong. Yes, I'm embarrassed to say quite often things go wrong. Um, one of the pleasures of working with magic is to learn step by step. One of my first experiences when I was quite young was far too successful and I got a grinning head about the size of an orange gnashing its teeth and staring at me outside the circle. That freaked me out, but I kept my cool and banished it. And that was foolish because having got it there, I should have said what I wanted it to do for me. But, you know, under moments of stress, these things not so easy to think about. Um, so yeah, definitely, yes. And uh, my practice isn't perfect yet. And the trouble is that magic is in fact a broken <laughs> science. Back 2,300 years ago, they were practicing it, they knew what the rickles were. Quite often in the procedures they say, do the usual. Nobody's told me what the usual is, but I'm gradually putting it together. But they, these guys knew, and they knew what, what the conditions were, what you should do, and what the signs of something about to go wrong were, and how you fixed it. I'm putting that together still. Christianity, for whatever it's worth as a religion, um, really devastated magic. So when the Greeks took uh, the magical manuscripts to Constantinople, they were Christianized and they started writing certain words in code, writing the Greek backwards, using substitution codes, making it very difficult for people like me to read it and figure it out later. Um, and then when it went into Latin, um, suppression by the church and the fear of being discovered and uh, garroted or burnt at the stake or imprisoned for 21 years, <laughs> Um, kept them from writing all of the details, particularly with necromantic rituals. So what we have today is a broken tradition, which I am trying very hard to restore. Now, I live, as some of you know, in Singapore, and there's a tradition of Chinese Taoist magic there. And these guys can claim, and I believe they do, 20, 36 generations of magicians who passed the word on from one to the next. And these guys have got complete systems. And strangely enough, they're a little bit like the Goetia, like there are what they call registers of spirits. There'll be 60 spirits or something. And to get an initiation, you're obliged to call successfully and bind each one of these spirits, at which stage your master will go, okay, you pass that one, here's the next lot. And they're more difficult, and so on. Now this is a solid tradition. I can't say I've worked my way very far into it, but I've worked my way in far enough to see the parallels. Because basically, spirits are spirits, whatever language they're talking. You know, um, the same procedure works. It's like chemistry. The ancient Chinese learnt about um, uh, inorganic chemistry and uh, producing uh, medicines and things in the year 1200, which science has just discovered 30 years ago. Uh, but they're the same. The chemistry is the same. And the magic is the same as well. So once you get past the Chinese, and yes, I, I can read Chinese, but I don't speak it very well, in fact, hardly at all. Um, once you get past the language, the actual techniques are there, the same. You need to call the spirit. It won't just come. You need to call it and you need to enforce it to come. Or you need to coax it. Some people prefer to coax it. And then when you've got it there, you need to bind it. Then you need to ask it what you want and you need to make sure it does it. And then you need to fix it so it'll come back. That's the full method. There you are, guys. I've just told you the whole method. <laughs> In whatever tradition it happens to be, whether it's a grimoire, a Greco-Egyptian, or whether it's a Taoist magician inside a circle with 28 stones around him, um, the same technique is used. Timing, very important. Binding, very important. Circle protection, very important. Phylactery layman, very important. All these things, exactly the same, same in every tradition. So I've been putting together bits and pieces of Chinese magic and seeing where the holes are in our Western practice and filling those holes. So yes, eventually, when I get to the end of this, I'll publish. Any other Just questions? Like you know, magic is scientific if it's done right. It's only the, well, I don't know, it's only some of the writers who seem to think that it's not scientific. It is scientific because methods have been <coughs> preserved. What was done 2,000 years ago was done by me 20 years ago. 
by somebody else yesterday and so on. Um, yes, I want to work on these. Um, my point is, though, that I do not wish to write a practical manual unless I've actually done it and made it work. And so I'm accumulating those uh, sections, and it's a big job. So give me time. Mm. Okay.